Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel H&E Life. Today I would like to continue my mini series on how to apply for residency and the ways to boost your application. Some of you watching this video may actually not be applying for pathology residency. Uh, this might still apply to you. Just take out the word pathology and fill it with whatever subspecialty that applies to you. And I feel like this is some general advice that could be applied for most people. All right. Let's start. Most of the things that I'm going to say now would ideally be done before you finish and submitted your application by the September 29th deadline. So the very first one I could say is if you are applying for pathology residency, the most important thing that you can do to boost your application is to do pathology rotations. For some people, it could be super easy because if you are in a medical school that has their own pathology department, you could probably get rotation they're pretty easy but if you are in a program that does not offer pathology rotations it might be more difficult historically pre-covid you are able to do apply for away rotations and hopefully even in this covid era uh, you're able to reach out to programs and see if any of them are willing to let you come and do an observership instead of an official away rotation. Uh, when I say away rotation, there is a, a specialized application process to officially do once uh, through like a common app process. Whereas if that's not offered because of COVID, you will have to individually email programs and ask them, can I come and do an observership with you? And it depends on which programs feel comfortable letting outsiders into their department. So that said, the more rotations of pathology you do, the better. Because pathology isn't one of those required rotations by your medical school, most people never experienced pathology and because of that a lot of people who probably would be very well suited for pathology would not know that they really enjoy pathology so try to get at least one and the more you do the better i'm i'm not saying you have to like do six months of pathology rotations like if you do one or two or three rotations throughout your third and fourth year that would be great because you're getting more experience knowing what pathology residency is truly like and also it's for you to interact with pathologists and residents and that way it also helps you have interactions with attendings and it will help you ask for letters of recommendation. Most places if they offer rotations is commonly in surgical pathology which is part of an, uh, anatomic pathology. That said if your hospital does not have a pathology department but your hospital have in-house labs what I mean by this is your uh, hospital that you are associated with for medical school do their own labs within the hospital then that means you have at least something of a clinical pathology department there because all the labs like uh, chemistries and CBCs and coags and all of that a blood bank they're all run by clinical pathology so even if your hospital doesn't have an official search path or you know pathology rotation I think you could probably reach out to someone and be like hey uh, can I shadow in the clinical labs because that will give you experience to clinical pathology. So that's another thing to consider. If it's not official, at least see if something like that is possible at your own hospital. So in terms of when you should do your pathology rotations, think of it as when people generally do their sub eyes. Most fourth years, if they were say applying for general surgery, would do a general surgery sub eye earlier in the year so they can get experience and then they could also have enough interactions with attendings to get letters for that. So if you're applying for pathology, similarly, you will want to get at least one rotation in uh, before the September deadline deadline for applications. That way you could have someone to write you letters. Or if you're lucky enough to be able to do more than one pathology rotation, doing them after the September deadline is also good because you could go to that program and hopefully you'll be able to make a good impression on that program. And then that program will be more likely to offer you an interview. Uh, I have uh, in the past have seen med students rotate with us in October, November, and uh, they were given an interview opportunity while they're rotating with us. So that is also another way to stand out for a program you really like. And when you're on uh, these away rotations, try to be energetic and enthusiastic every day. Make sure if um, you're going somewhere and attending was like, oh, 
uh, you know, this paper was interesting. Make sure that you actually read that paper. So next time when you talk to that attendee, be like, oh, you know, I read that paper and I thought this was interesting. Can we talk about it? And when you do that, people will know that you have a true interest in pathology. And that is like one of the big reasons why you're doing this rotation is to show that you have true interest in pathology. Also, when you're on rotations, make sure to interact with the residents, especially if this is a program you really want to go. Uh, residents do have say in who they want and who they don't want. If they, if you're, the residents have no impression of you, and when it comes to the time for the program to rank applicants, sometimes the program directors will ask the residents like, hey, do you remember this applicant? And then if no one remembers anything good about you, they'll be like, oh, they're just okay. And then you might end up going lower on the rank list, whereas if the residents like, oh yeah, I I love working with this person, I think they will be a good fit for us, then the, the program director would likely to rank you higher. Um, that said, I would never recommend you if you're on a away rotation to piss off any residents. Um, because we all know when you're with an attending, you're always on your best behavior, right? But when, when you are with residents, you might think of them as their peers, you might say things or do things that might be, you know, super annoying for them. And if as residents, we see a medical student that have red flags, we will report that to the, our program. And, you know, we even have the option saying, please do not rank this person because we do not want to work with them in the future. Future. That said, be enthusiastic and nice to everyone on your rotation. Another thing to boost your application would be if your step one score wasn't that great to study hard and make sure to take step two early enough so that score, especially a good score, will be able to be ready on your application when programs start looking at you. That said, pathology isn't, as of right now, that competitive of a subspecialty to apply for residency. You don't need a 260 to apply. It's especially if you are a U.S. medical graduate, having an average step score is, is good enough. If you are an IMG, most people would say that you'll need a slightly above average step score to be as competitive as a U.S. graduate who has this average. So the most important thing about step two and your step one score is that programs want to know that you will become a resident who's able to pass step three and also pass the pathology boards. And the best way to measure your ability to do that is basically look at your step one and step two score. If they see that you're an applicant who's failed step one multiple times, there's a red flag to their program that you're probably not gonna be able to pass the boards. This is something that you cannot really change since that's all that stuff is in the past, but that's why your step scores are so important to the programs is they, they need to make sure you're someone who could pass the standardized test needed to progress into your pathology career. In terms of letters for your application, way to improve your application is to have very strong and you know personable letters. What I mean by that is you don't want to get letters from letter writers who's just gonna write you a generic letter. I have worked with this med student. They are a good med student. DN. Like a letter like that means nothing to a program because that says nothing about who you are and what your eth work ethics are. So ideally you will want to ask for a letter from a writer who you've worked with for a prolonged period of time and someone who can truly evaluate your worth ethic and the energy you bring to a program. So getting letter writers from someone who can meet all those criteria, even if they're not pathology, is better than getting all of your letter writers from pathology who's going to write the same thing this person was a good med student dia even though you don't need to get all of your letters from a pathology attending you want to make sure at least one of your letters from a pathology attending because that shows the program that you're applying to is, hi, I have tried to interact with pathologists. I've tried to get to know what they're like and they're able to evaluate me because I've seen or shown interest in pathology. So everything I've talked about before about doing away rotations, doing observerships, getting letter writers from pathology, all of this is to basically show to the programs that you have a true and genuine interest in pathology. The personal statement is something that you can help express why you are interested in pathology because unlike most subspecialties in medicine, since there is not a lot of uh, requirements to do pathology, the programs want to make sure you're not someone super 
superficial and only wants to do pathology residency because your step one score is not high enough for you to apply for the program you really want to say like you want to do plastics but it turns out like oh man my step score isn't good enough for plastics i guess i'll apply for pathology because that's a red flag that you're not someone who's going to put the work up front when you go into the residency program other things to take into account they want to see in your personal statement how you've been able to interpolate your experience on a pathology rotation or at least reading interacting with pathologists um, about why you think that this is a very good specialty for you so you want to make sure you write something that is um, emphasizes why you think pathology is important and how it's important to you um, you don't want to write on your personal statement that, oh, I enjoy pathology for uh, because as good work life balance, uh, there's no like real call in the hospital. And most people have time to spend time with their family and family is very important to me, even though, though that's a great reason to go into pathology if, as a person, because, you know, that's the benefits of pathology. You don't want to write that on your personal statement or ever say that on your interview, because those are superficial reasons in the minds of the programs uh, about why you enjoy pathology. And another thing your personal statement is important for is you want to make sure there's no like grammatical or typographical errors on your personal statement. You want to be able to write something that makes sense and someone can read it and exp and is another way to show that you have good written communication skills. Uh, one thing about pathology is when you communicate with other people, it's usually through reports. Your report is basically most of your interactions with other clinicians other than the you know weekly tumor board and the, every occasional call a clinician might call you but your report they need to make sure that you're able to write a very well meaningful report that doesn't have a lot of grammatical errors so that's another reason why your personal statement also really matters and another way to boost your application especially if you're trying to apply to those top academic programs is to have some research in your background. It doesn't have to be pathology research. It's just to show that you have interest in research per se, because a lot of these top academic programs, once you're a resident, they kind of expect that you continue to do research and write abstracts or go to meetings and do publications. A good way to convince programs that you're able to do this as a resident is to be like, hey, I was already doing this before I became a resident. I've always had interest in research. And that will definitely give you a step up for those programs who really care about their residents doing research. And for programs who usually don't care about research having it is also just another thing to boost your application to show like hey i've gone above and beyond what's necessary i've done more than just med school i've done um you know i went out and tried to explore more of medicine and that will still be a plus on your application that said if you don't have any research done or you haven't published any papers that doesn't mean that your application is bad it just means that that's what you're showing is like hey this is not something i've been uh, putting my foot into, but you could always mention that like, I haven't been able to get many uh, research opportunities as a medical student, but it's something I'd definitely be interested in if I, I get accepted to your program because I know your program offers a lot of research opportunities. So that is another thing you can mention, I guess, for your interview. I guess that's it for today. Uh, thank you for being here, supporting my channel. Please like and subscribe and I'll see everyone later. Bye!